So, th so thank you everybody for taking the time to join the group. I feel like a lot of us have spoken with everyone who will be joining us today and in, in various uh, venues. And so it's a, a nice opportunity to kind of update you on our progress, but also, you know, the big uh, launch slash soft launch of the Fathomnet portal, which um, is the last platform um, that's been supported by the National Science Foundation's Convergence Accelerator. And then the agenda uh, today, remember this webinar is, a, is two hours. We're doing both a morning as well as a late afternoon Pacific time uh, webinar so that we're able to you know, address uh, different time zones. Um, but we're starting with a welcome and introduction by me, uh, followed by a detailed portal walkthrough by Ben Woodward. And then uh, that will follow be followed by a technical Q and A that Susan Poulton will be, um, you know, monitoring and uh, delivering. And then finally, I'm going to talk about next steps, uh, particularly around uh, the sustainability of the FathomNet program and how we're going to move this into the future beyond um, NSF funding. Um, so really quickly, I thought it would be good for us to introduce ourselves, or at least introduce the team. Um, while this is by no means not uh, an exhaustive list of everybody in the group, um, this is really the uh, core members of the team that have been working on the portal, uh, as well as other members of the, the group that are here for this uh, particular webinar. So first I wanna say that um, portal co-leads are Susan Poulton at ODL, um, Ben Woodward at C Vision. And right now, as we transition off of the NSF funding, um, some of these roles are, are in the process of shifting where Susan's going to be the, the portal strategic, um, uh, gosh, I just forgot, Susan, the portal strategic advisor. Uh, and then Ben will uh, be the, uh, the, the, the lead of the portal development as we move forward. I also wanted to introduce uh, two members of the portal development team, um, both of whom are at Sea Vision, uh, Jonathan Takahashi and Aaron Butler, who were uh, pivotal to the back and front end development. Um, but this again is by no means the exhaustive list of everybody on that team. Uh, we also have members of the FathomNet program staff here. Uh, Laura Troback is the ML Ops researcher uh, that just um, joined the team a couple months ago. Uh, and then Izzy Corby is the program manager. Um, and then last but not least, myself as the, the FathomNet lead. And if I haven't met you before, my name's Kakani. Uh, so with that, uh, I wanted to start uh, this talk by, you know, addressing something I think everybody on this call is really uh, familiar with. Uh, you know, there's a lot of discussion, a lot of talk around the blue economy. Um, you know, research in general, being able to understand, you know, and make biological observations uh, in, in an accelerated way. But we're also having to do this in a, in a um, you know, kind of a timeline where there, we're expected to see big expansion of activities related to the blue economy. Um, and so what this graphic shows is a vision for it and a number of different uh, elements that will make up the blue economy, like aquaculture, obviously oil and gas, offshore wind, et cetera. But as these activities expand, we have to, um, it really requires our understanding of the impact of these activities on the ocean environment and particularly the life that lives there. And so, Again, I don't have to convince this audience uh, about this, but um, it can be really challenging to make biological observations. There's a number of modalities that we can use to do that, uh, but imaging is is one that we're also seeing grow in scale and use. Um, and so when you're looking at or collecting this visual data, uh, it's really time consuming to convert this visual data from pixels to actionable insights like abundances, animal counts, IDs of animals, et cetera. Um, and so, you know, we've collected as a, you know, as a community, a lot of data already historically that have probably not been processed, but there's also anticipated like an exponential increase in the deployment of, of imaging systems to do this kind of work. And so where we as a community find ourselves is the situation of 
you know, feeling like we are drowning in data. And really what this is, is it opens up a really new opportunity uh, for us to come up with different solutions and approaches to address this need and this challenge. Um, and so when we started in on this project, and this is uh, when we started our funding with the National Science Foundation's Convergence Accelerator, uh, we conducted a really exhaustive use-inspired research interviews uh, that included 38 different uh, individuals representing um, you know, different sectors uh, related to the blue economy. Uh, we also in included you know, people participating in various workshops, including right the Fathom It database workshop that we've been hosting for the last couple of years. And um, what we found when we aggregated all this information was that there were some repeated themes that emerged from these interviews. Uh, the first was that there was a clear lack of collaboration between our respective members in the community. Um, and so, one of the stumbling blocks, right, is that marine the marine community is collecting data in silos. And how do you uh, create collaboration between um, organizations and groups that are doing this, especially when um, you know expertise tends to also be siloed as well? Um, and then again, if you want to solve this this problem, at least large scale observation of bi uh, biology in the ocean, uh, you know, it's a, a global solution requires global perspectives. Uh, we also learned that there is a clear lack of accessible tools. Um, unfortunately, uh, there's you know, a lot of tooling out there that allows people to deploy artificial intelligence and machine learning, but unfortunately, those tools still require um, somebody who has either a computer science or data science uh, expertise and really, you know, functionally groups that are doing this kind of work um, see that as a, a big challenge because if you're deploying tools that require more than, you know, one to two or three people, um, that's really hard to do for um, people constrained institutions and groups. Um, next was a clear lack of AI knowledge um, in terms of what AI could actually do for you what its, um, you know, what its performance might be. Um, and then also there's, it was also interesting how some groups or individuals thought that, um, you know, once you train a single model, uh, it will work perfectly in all, you know, conditions and situations. And, and so really people should stop thinking that these ML models are perfect because they're derived from data that are oftentimes coming from humans and we're not perfect. Um, and so we need to address this lack of AI knowledge. Uh, we've also noted a number of different uses for AI um, that you know, the, the community is really excited about. Um, you know, for instance, video, there's terabytes, years of data that need annotation that could potentially um, be added to the corpus of information uh, uh, on biological communities, but also, um, you know, broad data use cases, the idea being that, you know, an image, if you collect an image, it could have so many different applications. You could be a researcher who's interested in studying fish, but you're also capturing information about corals and, and sponge communities. And so, you know, data shouldn't be optimized for the first user's needs, but also if it was available, uh, people could assist more. And in particular, that's coming from ocean enthusiasts who really want to participate in this process. So all of these things together uh, really formed kind of the, you know, the, the, the baseline or the backbone of the activities that we've set out to do as part of uh, this funding. Um, and then, you know, really here the challenge is, you know, getting visual data to come into a particular pipeline, um, ideally with uh, artificial intelligence in the loop. This requires uh, iterative uh, approaches to, um, you know, having human verification that's used to train uh, your AI, your AI generates predictions, and then uh, that process repeats itself until you have annotated data out. Um, and in our experience and what we've learned over the years, as well as informed by these interviews, is that really the bottleneck for the community is, is human verification. So how do you slot in human verification in this pipeline so that you can use this knowledge and expertise as effectively and efficiently as possible um, to you know, really accelerate our, our capacity to process this information? And so what we've 
focused on over the past, uh, I guess, three years is on human AI interfaces. So how do we how do we do this? How do we actually have uh, humans uh, collaborating really efficiently with AI? And we also wanted to think about the, you know, like the, the user spectrum, uh, not just experts in machine learning, computer vision, or taxonomy, and marine science, but also um, enthusiasts, people who might have taken a marine bio course or love to just watch documentaries of, of animals. You know, how do we address these different groups? Um, and what we learned, right, is that there wouldn't be a one size fits all solution for this whole spectrum of users and instead wanting to break down this problem into digestible platforms that can be targeted for a particular audience. So first, as uh, a lot of people here are, know and are somewhat familiar with, uh, we launched FathomNet database, uh, I think officially two years ago, or uh, the first full version of the database. So it was launched last year. Um, and then just a, a quick refresher, the idea here for the database is that it provides uh, a global image and machine learning model repository uh, where, you know, you're essentially making available um, a public labeled image data set. And the idea is this data is distributed, so it comes from a number of different sources and really allows us to aggregate taxonomic expertise. Highlights for the project include our uh, NOAA agreement to host uh, submitted data to the database for up to 75 years from contributors all over the world. Um, and we've also been conducting Fathom at Kaggle competitions uh, in collaboration with the Computer Vision and Pattern Recognition Conference, but specifically the fine-grained visual categorization workshop. Um, the second uh, platform, and this addresses really the individuals that are collecting uh, visual data. And so obviously this is the subject of today's discussion, uh, but you know, just big highlights. The idea here is the, the portal allows us to provide access to ML data pipelines uh, where individuals can upload and host their visual data, create public and private repositories that can be shared. Um, but really the idea here is you can interact with and train uh, machine learning models, use them, uh, and then really the goal here, right, is to export those annotations into a format or into a database of your choice. Um, and so Ben will be talking in a lot of detail about all the features that the portal provides. Um, and then last but not least, the, uh, the platform that we've launched only in May of this year is the Fathom is Fathomverse, which is an online gaming app uh, with an audience that targets uh, ocean lovers, animal lovers, and armchair explorers, as well as underserved communities in ocean science. Uh, the content is for high school age and up players. And really the idea is to um, engage people uh, around uh, ocean animals and ocean life and what makes them really interesting and fascinating. So this is a mobile phone app on both iOS and Android devices. And since we launched, uh, we have almost 13,000 players representing 140 different countries who have generated more than 5.7 million annotations. Um, so anyways, I think so far, um, you know, with all of these platforms, I'm just very excited to see that they're now become available. But then the idea is that all of these things together will allow us to um, aggregate uh, expertise to help address this human verification challenge and help us to get annotated data out. Um, so, right, this is the goal. This is the vision, be able to generate, uh, you know, annotations uh, using models that are fine tuned on, you know, either your location or your particular imaging type um, and then work robustly over time. Um, so with that, I'm happy to take any questions you might have. And no questions is better than, all right.